Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephran Olive, and it's time for another Brewer's Minute. So today we're going to talk about one of the most important aspects of building on a budget in Modern, and that is the mana base. So in Standard, we can get away with playing Evolving Wilds in other lands that come into play tapped, because Standard is kind of slow, uh, at least compared to Modern, so you don't lose that many percentage points by playing some bad Enter the Battlefield tap lands, but in Modern, the format's super super fast, and you get punished severely if you're playing off curve and having your lands come into play tapped. So the biggest challenge, bar none, of building good modern decks on a budget is finding a way to build a mana base that can support your decks, but also doesn't eat up too much of your budget. If The more money you can save on your mana base while still functioning and having untapped lands when you need them is the more money you can spend on other cards, which are way more fun and way more exciting. So that's what we're going to be talking about today and talking about the differences between allied and enemy cycles. There's huge price differences and it really impacts how decks are built, especially on a budget, and then how we can actually build mana bases on a budget, and what kind of decks uh, different dual land support in modern. So a quick reminder before we get to the rest of the video, if you enjoy Brewer's Minute and the other series here on the site, it would be awesome of you if you could take a minute, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So on screen now, we have the fetch lands, and this is the do not use land. So fetch lands are amazing, but they're just too expensive for our purposes. Also, the filter lands, and then the shock lands, and these lands are awesome. If you have them in your collection, substitute them into the budget mana bases we're going to be talking about, because they're great, and they will make your decks better, but we're not focusing on these today. We're talking about lands that are like $2, $3, $4, not lands that are $10, $20, $50, so these are on our do not playlist because they're just too expensive. So let's talk about allied color dual lands for budget decks in modern. Number one on the allied color list is the buddy lands from the core sets. These lands don't always come into play untapped, but they often come into play untapped. Very good in two color decks because you'll probably have enough basics that you can maybe play a basic on turn one and then on turn two and turn three and after your buddy lands are always going to come into play untapped. They also work pretty well with Prairie Stream and friends. Prairie Stream, Sunken Hollow, the rest of the battle for Zendikar duels come into play tapped more often than the Buddy Lands, but still in a straight two color deck work really well. You can play four Prairie Streams, four Glacial Fortresses, a bunch of basics, and your mana base isn't going to be too bad. So they're worse than the Buddy Lands, but still reasonably playable, especially in two colors. And then the third cycle is actually pretty horrible, the Shadows over Innistrad cycle, but really there's not a lot of great allied color options in modern. These lands come into play tapped way too often to really be good, but if you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel for one last dual land cycle, these are an option, the third best option for allied color decks. Things get a lot better when we talk about enemy color decks, and one of the interesting things about building budget decks in modern is the mana base is incredibly better for enemy color decks compared to allied color decks. So this is mostly because of the addition of the fast lands, which are, if you were going to rank all the land cycles in modern, not even thinking of budget, they are probably number three in power behind the fetch lands and the shock lands. They are that good, but they are also dirt cheap because they're in print. So this is a big reason to build budget enemy color decks because you have these great lands for a really cheap price. Furthermore, you also get cheap pain lands. The allied colored versions are expensive. They haven't been reprinted in a while, but the enemy colored versions are really cheap because they were reprinted in multiple core sets just recently. So you get eight untapped duels between the fast lands and the pain lands in enemy color decks and then the third cycle for enemy color decks are the creature lands which are also really cheap because they're recently printed of course they do come into play tapped which is a bit annoying but they make up for this with a huge upside. If you're going to play lands that come into play tapped in modern, they really got to have an upside to make up for it. And I'm not talking about you gain one life or scry one. They need a significant upside. And turning into a creature that can attack and block is a big enough upside that these lands come in third on our list of enemy colored cycles. So what does this mean for actual mana bases? So here is an enemy colored mana base on a budget in modern. This mana base will set you back about 26 bucks. You get eight untapped duels and four creature lands, 12 dual lands in all. You can fill in the other 10 
ish land slots with basic lands or whatever you need to do but this gives you a really solid and cheap base for building a simic color deck in modern and this mana base is going to be super functional you're not going to have many problems with it should work just fine as far as an allied color deck things get a little sketchy so you have so many more lands that are going to come into play tapped if you're playing a aggro deck you're going to run into trouble where you're going to play off curve sometimes because your lands just don't match up so this mana base is fine strangely enough it's actually more expensive than the mana base we just talked about for simic colors the enemy colored ones this is like 35 dollars and it's less powerful so let's talk a little bit about three color decks and here the difference is really extreme so if you are going to play a wedge deck so think cons of turkey here your mana is insane wedge mana bases in modern can support aggro or control on a budget you get eight fast lands and eight pain lands which just makes your mana awesome you have 16 duels that come into play untapped fill in your other eight land slots with a few basics so you don't get blood moon and for 50 bucks or even less you have a awesome mana base yes you're not fetching for shocks but this mana base is not going to cost you many percentage points you're going to be playing on curve exactly where you want to be on the other hand if you are going to play a shard color deck so think shards of alara colors like esper you almost have to be controlled. This mana base really can't support aggro because you're replacing your fast lands with primarily lands that may or may not come into play untapped. You do get Caves of Koilos, you do get a creature land, which is fine in control, but then you're replacing fast lands with buddy lands. So the moral of this story is in modern, enemy colored mana is way better than allied colored mana. So if you are thinking of building a budget deck, you will naturally have more success building an enemy color deck than an allied color deck. And this is less of an issue if you're playing control, but if you're playing aggro, you almost have to be enemy colored if you're playing on a budget, or you're just going to be clunky and going to lose a lot of games that you wouldn't have otherwise lost. So keep that in mind. And then when it comes to tri-colored mana bases, you can play wedge colored decks, aggro or control or mid-range, any style, really well because of all the fast lands and the pain lands. However, if you're gonna try to build a shard colored deck, so Esper, Jund, you almost have to be mid-range or more controlling because you're gonna have a lot more come into play tap duels. So the bottom line is, there are really good options for building budget mana bases in modern, but you gotta know what lands support what. So if you're gonna play aggro and that's what you're going for, trend towards enemy colors the more enemy colored lands you can play the better your aggro deck is going to be when if you're going to play a slower deck it doesn't really matter as much and you could play enemy or allied colors so there's great options try to keep the cost of your mana base down because that gives you more money to spend on really cool fun cards and if you keep this in mind as you're building your mana base, you can definitely build mana bases that are $50, $30, even $20 that are not going to cost you percentage points, not going to lose you games. Anyway, that's been our Brewers Minute for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon.